Hello and welcome to notes section 3.1. We're going to be talking about functions in this set of notes. So go ahead and make sure you have your math notebook ready to write this down. Again, this is 3.1 and we're dealing with functions. First question is this, what is a function? That is a specific math term that refers to a specific relationship. What is a function? This might be something that you haven't heard of before, but the relationship that it describes is a function, and go ahead and write this down in your math notebook, a function describes the relationship, go ahead and write that a little better for you guys so you can see it, a function describes the relationship between two data sets. A lot of times in math, we're going to be looking at two sets of data that might have some sort of a relationship. And you can think about it this way. There is a relationship between your height and your age. As your age has increased, your height has also increased. This is true for just about everyone up to a certain point, but we could describe that relationship with a function. So a function has one set of data that influences the other set of data. And we'll go ahead and show that like this with a chart. So go ahead and draw a T chart in your math notebook where we're gonna put some information about functions. On that t-chart, I want you to write at the top of it, just this, input. Every function has a set of data that is the input, and then the output. What goes into the function and what comes out of the function. Again, this is describing a relationship between the input and the output. So in math, we always use this variable, x, to represent the input of a function. And then we use this variable, y, to represent the output of a function. x is what goes in, and y is what goes out. So if you see an x variable, know that that's the input of the function. If you see a y variable, know that that's the output of the function. Math has specific names for these as well. X is called the domain of the function. Domain of the function. If you see domain, that means it's an input value. And the output is called the range of the function. If you see the word range, that means you're looking at the output value. Now these are also related to some science terms. The input would be your independent variable. If you're doing an, uh, an experiment, your independent variable is what you change. The output would be your dependent variable. The dependent variable is what you measure to find out how did it affect it. So we have an input and an output, an X and a Y. In math, they're called the domain and the range. And in science, they're called the independent and dependent variable. Now, we probably won't use those science terms very much, but we will definitely use these terms, domain and range, input and output, and we will use the X and the Y variables. So what does this look like? How will this be expressed? Well, a lot of times you'll see a chart that looks a little bit like the one we just did. It has X and Y in it, and then it has a set of values. Let's say down the x side we had 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Again, those are our input values. We're going to input those into the function. Our y values, our outputs, let's say they were this, 0, 10, 20, 30, and 40. So you can see there is a real relationship between x and y here, and the function should be pretty easy to pick out. You take x and multiply it by 10, and you get y. 0 times 10 is 0. 1 times 10 is 10. 2 times 10, 20. 3 times 10, 30. 4 times 10 is 40. And you'd be able to continue this on and figure out, 
oh, well, if I put in 5, I must be getting out 50. That's one way to show that function. The other way to show that function is to do something like this. Say, the domain of my function is these values. 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We put them in a bracket like that. And the range of my function, also inside a bracket, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on and so forth. Right, so we can see, again, there's those terms coming up, domain for the x values and range for the y values. The function is what changes the x and makes it into the y. Now there's an important rule behind functions as well that you'll need to note down. What you'll, what you'll notice if you look at these values is that every x had one y value. 0 goes with 0, 1 goes with 10. 2 goes with 20, 3 goes with 30, and 4 goes with 40. Here's the rule I want you to write down is this. In a function, each domain value can only have one range value. Each domain value can only have one range value. That's a really important word there, the word one. You can only have one range value for each domain value. If you put something in for x, you can only get out one possible y value. Think about the example that I started out with about your height and your age. If your age is the input and your height is the output, there's only one height for each age that you were. At the age of 10, you were a certain height. You weren't three different heights, you were a certain height. At the age of 12, you were a certain height. At your current age, you are a certain height. You're not five different height values. So if you saw a t-chart that looked like this, you would know that this is not a function. One has a value of five, but one also has a value of eight. That's too many values for number one. Two, value, two has a value of seven, but two also has a value of eight. That's too many outputs for the value two. Remember the rule was this, each domain value can only have one range value. Look at that, here's a range value for one and another one for one and two has two different range values. So we would say this is not a function. And that's one thing you're gonna to have to be able to identify is whether things are functions or they are not functions. If you see too many y values for each x value, then you know it's not a function. If each x value has only one y value, like our first example right here, that is a function. So just to kind of wrap this up one last time, let's look at it this way. If I have an input, it always has an output. And the thing that causes the input to go to the output is the function. The function is the thing that takes input and makes it output. It takes x and it makes y. It takes domain and it makes it into range. The function is what does that. The function.